Welcome back to another Camper Build Series video. Thanks for being here. If you find this video valuable or want to see more of this build series, please consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments below. If you would like a diagram of the electrical system, let me know in the comments. If enough people comment, I will take some time to create a diagram and I will share it for free. The next step in our camper build is going to be to run all of the wiring in the camper. I don't have all of the electronics yet. I've ordered them all. They're kind of on their way slowly, um, but I do have my wire already. So we're going to start wiring up everything, getting it all laid out so that when those parts come in, I can finish it up. So let's head over to the camper and I'll show you exactly how we're going to wire everything together. So the whole system starts here in the tongue of the trailer. Uh, I'm going to have a tongue box here, which is going to hold my battery and also my fuse box. So power goes from the battery into the fuse box and then from the fuse box, it will then get dispersed to the different systems or zones of my camper. I also will have a solar panel on the roof, the power cords down from the solar panel into the, the charger for the battery, which will also be housed there. So that system is a Renogy system. Um, I'll link that below as well. Today, since I don't have a lot of the parts and I just have my wire, I'm gonna be kind of wiring, pulling the wire out everywhere it needs to go. And I'll just kind of leave enough at the end when I cut it off to make sure I have enough to work with. On my first build, I used a lot of wire nuts. And while wire nuts are really great and safe, they also take up a lot of space. I'm gonna be, I figured out a new way to kind of twist the wires together. And then I'm gonna heat shrink those together so that um, moisture can't get in there. So I have those heat shrinks. I use my heat gun and it, they should shrink up really nice and seal those up are just as good as a wire nut would. So in order to get my power from the tongue box into the camper, I'm actually gonna have to drill a hole here on the front of my camper. And then I'll use some kind of conduit between the tongue box and the camper. For this build, I'm using 12 gauge wire. Let me tell you, this is overkill for the system that I'm putting in. I'm not running anything that pulls very much amperage at all. So this is overkill. I think 14 gauge would be good and 16 gauge would probably be fine. So I'll run this all throughout the camper. I also have some switches that I'll be installing for the system for all of my lights. So there are two exterior lights, one on each side, right outside the door. There are going to be two interior puck lights, LED puck lights. Um, I decided to go with puck lights this time. I think they look a little nicer. That's the plan right now for lighting. Then in the front of the trailer, I will also have USB ports on both sides. Um, for charging phones, um, batteries for cameras, whatnot. Uh, there'll be two ports on, on both sides. I'll also put a voltimeter in the camper so we can see during the middle of the night how much we're pulling and how our battery life is doing. We don't really don't wanna take these batteries below 50%. These are not really nice, fancy batteries. They're the cheapest ones you can get. Um, and because of that, we really need to take care of them. We need to keep, keep up on the maintenance of them and we need to uh, make sure we don't draw below 50% of the battery. If we draw below 50%, it's still okay, but it really reduces the life of the battery if we do that. So we try and keep it above 50% as much as possible. On the top, we'll have that fan. It is a vent fan. Um, again, it's a, probably the cheapest model you can get. And someday I might upgrade to a better model. It's loud, it's clunky, but it works. If I crack open those windows, you can really feel the air being pulled in and pushed out through the roof. Uh, if it's cool outside, it'll stay cool in the camper. Besides that, I will be installing a couple of 12 volt cigarette plug style um, plugs in the camper. Not super necessary, but I think if we were ever to go into some really cold weather, we might get a heat blanket that can run on that 12 volt power. So it's just something for future if we ever needed more power. So one of those in the, in the cab and one of them in the back galley. I'll also put a waterproof USB port on the outside of the camper on the side that we have our awning, which is gonna be the passenger side. Um, I'll put a USB port on the back of the camper, the back side of the camper, uh, just so I can plug in our USB lights that we hang from our awning. These are cafe lights. They're really cheap, but they look really cool. It's kind of set a good ambiance when you're out camping. For now, those are all the electronics that we're going to be installing in the camper. I might run an extra wire or two to the back 
just to make sure we're covered in case we want to add anything else. And I'll kind of stow those away and hide those so you can't see them, but they will be available and there if we ever wanted to add anything in the future. So for now, we're gonna drill our hole. We'll start pulling that wire to where it needs to go throughout the camper. And I'll be using some painter's tape and marking each zone so I know exactly what it is. Then we can start wiring up our fuse box here on the tongue of the trailer. I start by drilling out a one inch hole in the front of the camper to allow the wires to go from the tongue box to the camper. I then begin running wire for the different zones of the camper through the hole. I make sure to leave a couple of feet of wire so that I have enough to wire to my fuse box once the tongue box is installed. I've left a small gap around the insulation and the framing. It is about a three quarter inch gap which leaves plenty of room for me to run my wire without having to dig out channels in the insulation or drill holes through the narrow three quarter inch framing. I end up running three separate wires back to the rear galley area of the camper. These wires will supply power for my external USB port to power the cafe lights under the awning. They also will power all of the lights and power outlets in my galley space. And I have also run an extra wire to be used for any accessories that I decide to add in the future. During this step, make sure to label both ends of your wire to make things easier when you start wiring up lights and accessories. I wanted to give a small demonstration of how I wire up my switches and all wire connections with the heat shrink tubing. First, you'll want to make sure to strip back your wire. I end up stripping it back about an inch or two. In this system, red wires are hot and black wires are ground. The switches only get wired along the hot lines, so I go ahead and push my black ground wire out the hole I've drilled for my exterior light. I then take my red wire and the incoming wire for my switch. I slide a medium sized heat shrink tube over one of the wires. Make sure you do this before twisting any wires together. Next, begin twisting the two wires together. After this, you will fold the exposed wire in half on itself. After that, you will fold it back one more time so that your folded exposed wire is pressed against one of your insulated wires. At this point, you will slide your heat shrink tubing back over the wire connection. Once it has been slid into place, you can use your heat gun to shrink the tubing. I then add another small section of wire to the other side of my switch to run up from my switch and out the side of the camper for the exterior light. This is the same technique I use for all of my electrical connections throughout the camper. As you can see here, I've labeled each wire coming out the front of the camper. I've also added a section of heat shrink just to make things look a little nicer between the camper and the future tongue box. Here you can see the whole system wired, tucked into the electrical channels and taped back. It is now ready for the interior siding to be added. Here's the switch for my interior lighting. The power runs from the switch up to the lights overhead. Next to the switch is the wiring for my USB charging ports. These two wires are for the overhead puck light. And these two wires are run to the middle of the roof to power our overhead vent fan. This is the wiring for the exterior light on the driver's side of the camper. Here at the rear of the camper, I will drill a one inch hole for my exterior USB charging port. All of the wires in the rear of the camper are taped up and out of the way, 
so I can continue working on the camper until siding is on and I can start installing accessories. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and that you found the information helpful. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions. Again, if you would like a diagram of the electrical system, let me know in the comments. If enough people comment, I will take some time to create the diagram and I will share it for free.